What is Kalakadal which has flooded houses in Kerala's coastal areas? Also, what are the new focus areas in India's international relations strategy? Level playing field and MCC, two terms which are gaining prominence as the elections are approaching. Hello everyone, I am Manas Srivastav and I am here with the three must reads from the Indian Express today. Aaj ki tariq hai. April 3rd, 3rd of April and my first pick comes from the explained page. So I go directly from the explained page and in the explained page there is this uh, explainer by Shaju Philip. What is Kala Kadal which has flooded houses in Kerala's coastal areas? Now this becomes my first pick because this talks about a geographical phenomena. Exams may, jab bhi koi geographical phenomena news may hai, it becomes a very important question for your exams. Number one. Number two, this is a very potential question for exam because sometimes Kalakadal or Tsunami may look confused. They think that both the terms same meaning. Ke hai. They, they mean the same. And therefore, this explainer becomes important. Now, let us understand the context first. The context is that hundreds of houses have been flooded in several coastal areas of Kerala due to high sea waves also known as swell waves please underline the worst affected regions include kolam trivanantapuram districts authorities have opened relief clam camps for the affected local communities such flooding events are called swell surge or kalakadal in malayalam now what is kalakadal and what causes kalakadal ye do jo major uh, cheeze hain Iske baare mein aapko honi so Kalakadal is essentially a coastal flooding during the pre-monsoon that is April, May ke mahine mein season and this is uh, caused or season by this is basically caused by swell waves of the southwest coast of India on the southwest coast of India. Now obviously uh, the explainer will talk about any research paper or wahan se aapko news ko authenticate karega. You don't need to understand the entire process of writing that particular news through research paper. Just focus on the facts and definitions. Now, Kalakadal is a local name. Local fishermen uses this word. Now, but Kalakadal is a word becomes very important because it can be directly asked in the exam because UNESCO ne 2012 mein. UNESCO in 2012 has formally approved this term. Okay, now what causes Kalakadal? This is important. So when you look at the uh, explainer, Kalakadal is caused by waves that are formed by ocean swell. Hence the name swell surge. So please remember these two things, ocean swell, swell surge. So the next question which should come to your mind is what are ocean swells? So ocean swells occurs not due to the local winds, but rather due to the distant storms like hurricanes or even long periods of fierce gale winds. So I can make a potential question here by just, you know, asking you is the sentence correct or incorrect. So I can write ocean swells occur due to local winds. But here it is mentioned it is not due to local winds. And then further it says that during such storm, huge energy transfer take place from the air into the water, leading to the formation of very high waves. Such waves can travel thousands of kilometers from the storm center until they strike shore. And usually Kalakadal is a consequence of the strong winds in the southern part of the Indian Ocean where an ocean swell is generated and the waves then travel north to reach the coast in two or three days. Okay, so this is about Kalakadal. The next question any examiner or will ask to you is, you know, what is the difference between Kalakadal and what is the difference between Kalakadal and Tsunami? Now, there's a very small paragraph and it says that Kalakadal came under the spotlight after the 2004 tsunami that killed more than 10,000 people. However, Kalakadal is often mistaken to be a tsunami, which is a series of enormous waves created by an underwater disturbance, usually associated with earthquakes occurring below or near the ocean. Now, this should actually take you back to your basic books where tsunami ka process Revise karna. You have to revise the, the phenomena, the process of tsunami and then compare it with Kalakadal. 
okay number one this is important thing second there is a there is a term which is being used here and uh, it is actually a body which is incois which is international national sorry indian national center for ocean information center jab bhi ye koi bodies ke bare mein baat kare reference de just try to google and look for these bodies for example this is an autonomous organization under the ministry of earth sciences itni information kafi hai to understand about this body okay so make that a habit the other thing which is the third important point is whenever you are studying any geographical phenomena or international relations or geography related news make it a habit to sit with an atlas okay and just locate the region where it is happening and see around what are the things around it okay so because picturesque memory stays for a long time also if it involves a revision through making a diagram or something do that ठीक है तो दिस इज द फर्स्ट पिक नाउ लेट्स गो टू द सेकंड पिक व्हिच इज यूजुअली माय फर्स्ट पिक इन मोस्ट ऑफ द केसेस बट टुडे आई एम टेकिंग इट एज अ सेकंड पिक एंड इट इज बाय सी राजा मोहन सी राजा मोहन राइट्स ऑन इंटरनेशनल रिलेशंस फॉरेन स्ट्रेटजी एंड सो एंड सो फॉर एंड हिज टुडे इज हेडलाइन इज हाउ दिल्ली मैप्स द वर्ल्ड बाय सी राजा मोहन एंड राजा मंडला नाउ दो तीन चीजें इसमें इंपॉर्टेंट हैं पहली say from the second paragraph onwards when you read that how islands have emerged as important uh you know india's new geographic based foreign strategy or international relation may how islands have become important be it maldives be it you know uh, mauritius or rich papua papua new, uh, new guinea in the pacific islands or when we talk about mauritius we talk about agalega or we're talking about australia the you know the links with australia which the government is trying to establish and also uh, when we talk about lakshadweep and andaman so what is happening is that islands have become very important for our nation's foreign strategy the second important thing is you know these words around which you know uh, which have gained prominence for example the indo pacific okay now indo pacific the acceptance of indo pacific by the indian government has come after 10 years after a decade almost a decade 2007 2007 may first time the japanese premier used this word and then uh, now we have accepted it now indo pacific india indian ocean and pacific ocean okay these two oceans and combine it with indo pacific thing now why is it important is because now this indo pacific as a concept has taken a institutional form of quad you have to tell me which are important countries in quad there are four countries which are these countries so it's an institutional uh, uh, you know uh, the expression of indo pacific similarly you have eurasia europe plus asia and you see the institutional expression in the form of sco now sco mein bahut sari countries hain which are the countries so go back to the basics look for quad the countries the Uh, look for sco the country and the uh, headquarters or the recent developments there but when we talk about eurasia ek aur cheez dhyan mein rakhna hai wo hai that india is getting closer to europe okay europe is becoming more important and in uh, europe when you see then the efforts to you know from the perspective of trade efta we have we've talked about efta recently and then you have its closeness with france or uh you know the recently ukraine's foreign ministers uh you know uh, visit underlines india's potential role in shaping war and peace in this region also okay so we are participating not only in terms of trade but also with reference to war and peace and then you have uh, uh, the other important uh, things which are mentioned is in are the in the 11th paragraph just Okay, let me read this eleventh paragraph. The plans for an economic corridor between India and Europe via Middle East, the Abraham Accord, and as I say, you should underline and you should just note it down and find more about them. The Gaza world, the rise of Arab Gulf, India's deepening partnership with the UAE, South Arabia, in the presence of nearly twenty Indian naval ships outside the Red Sea region, the growing engagement with Africa is producing a more integrated view of the Middle East. and africa the eastern mediterranean and the western indian ocean ab is sab mein ek apwad hai there is there is some exception here and that exception is sark okay so sark has been uh, one problematic area but it has it has actually uh, led india to move to 
you know other other regions also uh, and you, you you know what is the problem with the sark and it's mentioned in this article now the article ends with a very important note on two important areas now ye jo do regions hai mujhe lagta hai ki ye exam mein puche ja sakte hain from the perspective of geography to international relations se geography tak okay now here again atlas kholiye in areas ko dekhiye one is your uh, zomia z o m i a jo ki mention hai that it is an academic term for a region where the highlands of northeast india southwest china and southeast asia meet it's a region where it's a region where centralized state control has been traditionally weak and is full of minority population some of whom straddle formal state borders okay so ek to ye hai and then is of course the khorasan now you know when you go to west of pakistan and then beyond that area now all those areas you have to figure out in your atlas and mark it and simply there can be a question ki khorasan kya hai somya ka hai kya hai and they can give you various option from the geography to ye cheeze aapko dhyan mein rakhni hai so what did i say about indo pacific about eurasia what are we doing in the europe re- europe and uh, uh, region nearby that this 11th paragraph of this particular editorial and then the new strategic attention which is demanded in these two areas of somya and khorasan so it is a very analytical article it's a very uh, article which can be helpful in your mains and descriptive but it gives you a lot of things related to current affairs and prelims based exam okay now my third article which i'm not going to go in a very detail but it's very important to mention is this editorial uh, again or from the ideas page actually this is the empire cannot be silent this is by sy kureishi now if you remember uh Uh, yesterday also there was this editorial by one of the former election commissioner where all again similar theme was uh, talked about and this question on level playing field uh, for all the political parties in an election times and the moral code of conduct okay these are the two important terms in news with respect to uh, your election commission and your uh, elections so इसके बारे में बोथ टर्म्स यू शुड यू नो सर्च फॉर लेवल प्लेइंग फील्ड कैन बी आस्ड इन अदर एरियाज ऑल्सो डू यू फाइंड लेवल प्लेइंग फील्ड इन फॉर एग्जाम्पल इन स्पोर्ट्स ओके और इन अदर कॉम्पिटिशन एंड हियर वॉट डू वी मीन इन इलेक्शन वॉट डू वी मीन बाई लेवल प्लेइंग फील्ड एंड देन ऑफकोर्स द मॉडल कोड ऑफ कंडक्ट ऑल बेसिक्स ऑफ मॉडल कोड ऑफ कंडक्ट शुड बी नोन ओके फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ आई आस्क की मॉडल कोड ऑफ कंडक्ट कब से लागू होता है दैट यू शुड नो ओके so all these things you should know and these editorial should be read from those perspective also to extract the points which can be important for your prelims or you know objective examination and can link to current affairs so these are my three must read three picks from the day and uh, that's all from me today you can also write to me at manas.shivastava@indianexpress.com for your suggestions for your comments and tell me what were your three picks from today's indian express That's all. Thanks, Matt. Work hard. Conquer your goal. Bye bye.